you want some relaxation, tough guys? Let's do it. Jean-Claude Van Damme is a Belgian actor, martial artist, producer, director, and combat choreographer. Action movies brought him fame and status as a bright symbol of the 90s era. Fame, however, became a great test for him, which he successfully passed. We will tell you about this and much more in this video. Jean-Claude Van Damme, how the action movie star of the 90s lives and where he spends his millions. The future celebrity was born on October 18, 1960 in a suburb of the Belgian capital of Brussels and was named Jean-Claude Camille Francois Van Varenberg. He grew up in a bilingual family because his father, Eugene, half Jewish, half Flemish, spoke French and his mother, Eliana, spoke the Flemish dialect of the Dutch language. Thanks to the Spanish nanny, he has also learned to understand Spanish well, although he can't speak it himself. Besides many hours of watching the animated series The Flintstones helped him to start learning English, and later he learned German as well. By the way, Jean-Claude never managed to get rid of the accents, which is why his characters often have French names and roots. From early childhood, Jean-Claude was frail and sickly, and to fix it at the age of 10, his father enrolled him in a karate school. Two years later, the boy continued his training at the National Karate Center, where he was taken under the care of an experienced coach, Claude Goetz. An individual training program was developed for the talented kid, which included not only technical karate skills, but also psychological training. Goats put the student in sparring with adult professional athletes of a completely different age and weight category and also forced him to fight off his shepherd dog. However, according to Jean-Claude himself, nothing could compare to classes at the ballet studio where he began studying at the age of 16. The actor has repeatedly stated that anyone who has experienced classes at the ballet bar can handle any sports load. At the same age, the future actor joined the Belgian national team and even became a European champion, but his successes were overshadowed by psychological problems. Since adolescence, he suffered from depression, but back then, people believed that he simply had an unruly temper and a lack of a good upbringing. Especially difficult episodes occurred on days without training. Noticing this pattern, Jean-Claude's father hung a punching bag in the attic so that his son could train at home. In addition to karate, the guy mastered four more martial arts the American version of kickboxing, Thai boxing called Mai Tai, Chinese martial art Kung Fu, and Korean Taekwondo. In his sports career, one victory followed another. He lost only one fight, and even then by disqualification. However, other interests have appeared in the life of the young man. In 1979, he appeared in the Belgian-French drama film Woman Between Wolf and Dog. But the main hobby of the attractive young Belgian was women. At the age of 18, he tied the notch with a wealthy 25-year-old Venezuelan Maria Rodriguez and did not hide that he married for convenience. Jean-Claude cheated on his wife, but the woman was so in love that she patiently tolerated all the antics of her husband. Thanks to his wife's money and the loan he received from the bank, the guy opened California Gym, in which he taught karate, aerobics, and bodybuilding. So, he became a successful businessman with a stable financial income. He earned $15,000 a month. In 1981, in Paris, Jean-Claude met the British film actress and future godmother of Angelina Jolie, Jacqueline Bissett, and they started dating. She invited him to try his luck in Hollywood, promising her support. Van Damme sold his club, left his wife, and went overseas. However, when he arrived in the USA, he found out that Bissett was no longer waiting for him, but was having an affair with another guy. During the first months in Los Angeles, Jean-Claude slept in the car, washed in public toilets, and even sometimes dug through trash cans to find food. He had occasional odd jobs from time to time. The young man worked as a carpet cleaner, a pizza delivery boy, and a limo driver. As the actor later called in an interview, he was looking for expensive cars in the parking lots in front of film studios and attached his photos with a phone number to their windows. At the same time, he met the action movie star Chuck Norris. He had a nightclub where Jean-Claude got a job as a bouncer. In addition, the future actor became Chuck's sparring partner and got a cameo role in his movie Missing in Action, 
Although the aspiring actor played an unnamed soldier, it was enough to attract the attention of Hollywood directors and producers. In 1984, he appeared in the musical film Breakin' and the short comedy Monaco Forever, replacing his difficult-to-pronounce surname Von Barenberg with a simpler Von Damme. Jean-Claude also worked as a hardwood floor layer in a construction company and met the daughter of the owner of the company, Cynthia Derderian. In 1985, they got married, which allowed the young man to officially gain a foothold in the United States, and the family of the young wife helped pay for English language courses and several courses at the acting school. However, the marriage did not last long, less than a year. In 1986, Van Damme got the role of a Russian fighter in the action movie No Retreat, No Surrender, earning $250. In 1987, he was invited to play the role of an alien hunter in the sci-fi action movie Predator, and this work could become a breakthrough in Van Damme's career. But two days after the start of filming, he left the project. The official reason for the removal from the role was a change in the concept of the movie, according to which the Predator became very tall and physically powerful, and Van Damme, who had an average height, looked unconvincing in this role, but Jesse Ventura, who starred in the same film, said that Jean-Claude was unhappy that his face would not be visible in the frame, complained about the extremely uncomfortable alien costume, and, most importantly, had a fight with a stuntman. Meanwhile, friendship with Chuck Norris unexpectedly contributed to changes in Van Damme's personal life. At one of his parties, Jean-Claude met bodybuilding champion Gladys Portuguese. The love sparked instantly, and soon the couple were married, and a few years later, they had a son Christopher and a daughter Bianca. However, neither strong feelings for Gladys nor the birth of children didn't stop the man from having affairs. At some point, the girl couldn't take it anymore. She took the children and filed for divorce. The legend has it that Perseverance helped Van Damme get his next role in the action film Bloodsport. He carried karate magazines everywhere with him, with his pictures on the cover in case he ran into a producer who could give him a job. Surprisingly, it worked. Once the actor saw producer Menahem Golan in a restaurant, and in addition to spectacular photos, he even managed to show his signature helicopter kick, also known as a jump-spinning hook kick. He was finally approved for the role thanks to the aforementioned movie Predator. One of Jean-Claude's friends told the producers that he had just starred in a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, without mentioning the quitting. Fortunately for the actor, his name has not yet been removed from the list of actors, so the deception was not revealed even upon checking. Bloodsport, released in 1988, brought Van Damme real success and $25,000 in royalties. You hold this, if I can grab it. Before you close your hand, I get the girl. If I cannot, she's yours. His blue eyes, athletic figure, and soft French accent captivated the audience, who had been waiting for a new hero for a long time. Next, he appeared in the films Black Eagle with a fee of $70,000, as well as Cyborg, for which Van Damme received $50,000, and a lawsuit for deliberately stabbing a stuntman with a rubber knife in the eye. In the end, the court ruled against the actor and awarded the victim $487,000. These accusations didn't hinder Jean-Claude's career. At the end of the 80s, he starred in another action movie, Kickboxer, with a fee of $70,000. That's it. Take your bag and leave my house. What? What's going on? You don't want training. You want me to break my leg? During the filming, the actor was inspired by the performance of Charlie Chaplin in the film City Lights. He often publicly admired Chaplin, calling him the first real movie superhero. In the early 90s, Van Damme starred in the action films Death Warrant, Lionheart, Nowhere to Run, Last Action Hero, for which he received from seventy dollars to $75,000. In 1991, the actor appeared in the film Double Impact, where his fee was $600,000. He's your brother. Brother? Why? Because he looks like me? I'm gonna change that. Because I'm gonna f up his face. Subsequent films only strengthened the actor's popularity. His royalties were multi-million dollar payouts, and his name was on a par with those of stars who were at the peak of their fame at the time, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So in 1992, the action movie Universal Soldier was released, for which he was paid $1.5 million. The attracting device on me. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Look for something unusual. 
something hard. For his next movie, Hard Target, Jean-Claude received $3.5 million. You seem to have a real talent, Mr. Boudreaux, for attracting violence. Does that make me a bad person? Look, why did you arrest me for? Getting beat up without a license? He personally met with the famous Hong Kong director John Woo and persuaded him to start a project in Hollywood. The interference in the production process didn't end there, and at the stage of editing, Van Damme didn't like that the character of Lance Henriksen takes up as much screen time as him. The actor took the raw footage and a few days later presented his edit. In his opinion, if the audience goes to a movie with Van Damme, they should see him on the screen. The popularity of Jean-Claude grew rapidly, and he was invited to play the character of the first Mortal Kombat game. But the actor himself was not very interested and declined the opportunity. Nevertheless, the creators of the game were inspired by Jean-Claude, giving the character the same initials, JK, copied his appearance as close as possible and even stealing his signature kick. At the same time, Van Damme had a relationship with actress and model Darcy Lapierre. In 94, they got married, and a year later their son Nicholas was born. As the man later admitted, while his wife was pregnant, he cheated on her with the popular singer Kylie Minogue. Celebrities starred together in the action movie Street Fighter, and the working relationship developed into a fleeting workplace affair. By the way, for Street Fighter, the actor received a fee of $8 million. A little less, $5 million for each, he earned by starring in the action films Time Cop and Sudden Death. Then the movies Maximum Risk, Double Team, Knock Off, and Desert Heat were released. At the same time, in the late 90s, Van Damme made his debut as a director, shooting the action movie The Quest. I brought them here. It's my fault. If I win, they'll go free. You'll keep the dragon. It was financially successful worldwide, but received criticism for copying some scenes from Bloodsport. The actor was often involved in writing the script. For example, according to rumors, the idea of the 1998 film Legionnaire came to him after he spent a second honeymoon with Darcy Lapierre in Africa. They were celebrating the restoration of their relationship after a long period of conflict. Nevertheless, in 1997, the couple divorced. Conflicts have generally become routine for Van Damme. He often fought with the paparazzi and even got into a fight with his former security guard once, but the fight was very short. After missing one or two blows, Jean-Claude fell to the floor right away. By that time, he had been abusing alcohol and drugs for several years, trying to cope with depression. The situation changed when he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and prescribed treatment. In addition, his ex-wife Gladys gave him a helping hand. She persuaded the man to go to a rehabilitation clinic and controlled his every step until the actor completely got rid of addiction. In June 1999, Jean-Claude and Gladys got married again, and since then, the actor has repeatedly stated that he considers this woman the love of his life. But while the fight against addiction was in full swing, Van Damme's career suffered. The quality of films he participated in dropped, they failed one after another at the box office, for example, Universal Soldier The Return. To keep the schedule on track, the producers hired a specialized person to keep an eye on the out-of-control star, but it didn't help. On top of everything else, in 2000, the actor was sentenced to a fine of $1,200, three years of probation, and a 90-day revocation of his license after he was detained for driving under the influence. In the early 2000s, the actor's filmography was replenished by the films The Order, Replicant, Derailed, In Hell, Wake of Death, Narco, and Second in Command. Another project was to be the film The Monk, starring Jean-Claude. For this role, he went on a strict diet and lost 30 pounds, was going to go to China and Burma to learn new fighting techniques, but in the end, the producers abandoned the project. There's an assumption that the script was reworked and implemented later in the film Bulletproof Monk. Then, Van Damme appeared in the action movie The Hardcore, for which he received $3 million. The comedy drama film The Exam, the action movies Until Death, and The Shepherd Border Patrol. None of them was a great success, unlike the fictionalized autobiography JCVD. Basically, Jean-Claude played himself, an unemployed actor, a former action star who has a lot of debts, lawsuits, and serious problems with the police, who consider him the organizer of the robbery. J'en ai marre! Je veux mon fric! Depuis hier, j'en ai marre! Hein? J'ai pas de cash sur moi! Jean-Claude Van Damme sans cash! Oh, je veux un emprunt! Mais ça va pas! J'ai pas encore dormi, j'ai pris l'avion! 
His performance impressed the audience and critics, which contributed to a new rise in popularity. On the wave of success, the actor starred in the sequels Universal Soldier Regeneration and Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning, the action films Assassination Games, Dragon Eyes, and Six Bullets, a French crime comedy Boer sur la Ville or Arab on the City, the horror UFO, and voiced the cartoon Kung Fu Panda 2. Van Damme presented his second directorial work, Frenchy, and even appeared as a foreign guest in the Ukrainian-Russian comedy Shevsky vs. Napoleon. Stallone invited him to appear in the first part of the franchise, The Expendables, but Jean-Claude then refused, because Sylvester failed to explain to him the personality of his character, but only promised a large fee. But he appeared in the 2012 sequel, and this project became the most successful for the actor in recent years. Last time the case, he will force me to cut his heart. In 2013, the films Welcome to the Jungle, Enemies Closer, and Swelter premiered. Meanwhile, Jean-Claude fell on hard times in his personal life. Back in 2009, at one of the resorts in Thailand, he started dating Ukrainian Elena Kaverina. The media reported that Van Damme came to Ukraine several times to visit Kaverina and even bought her two apartments in Kiev and Kriviri. At the same time, the actor was not planning to leave his wife, but in 2015, Gladys had enough of it and filed for divorce. However, after a few months, the couple decided to give the relationship another chance, as the separation would be too hard for both them and their children. Meanwhile, cinema-goers could hear the voice of the celebrity in the third part of the animated movie Kung Fu Panda and see him in such films as Pound of Flesh, Jian Bing Man, and a remake of the 1989 action movie Kickboxer Vengeance. In the original film, Van Damme played a young fighter, Kurt Sloan, but in the remake, he was his mentor. Two years later, the sequel Kickboxer Retaliation was released. And he may never be that good. Hey, beat Mongo. Guaranteed. You mentioned Mongo one more time and I'll smash a big face. <laughs> oh, really? Other projects of Jean-Claude Van Damme were the action films Kill Em All, Blackwater, The Bouncer, We Die Young, and the ironic miniseries Jean-Claude Van Johnson. The veteran fighter plays a fictional version of himself, that is, actor Van Damme, who is actually special agent Jean-Claude Van Johnson, who uses his acting career as a cover. In 2020, the actor was inducted into the Martial Arts History Museum Hall of Fame. By the way, his homeland also paid tribute to the action star, there is a life-size statue of him in Brussels. In July 2021, a comedy thriller, The Last Mercenary, starring Van Damme, was released on Netflix. La vie. C'est comme une opération. La vie, la vie, mais c'est vrai, la vie. Tu fais ton mieux avec ce que tu as. The actor played a retired special agent. He showed his signature splits and helicopter kick, and he also spoke French, his native language, which he never did in his movies. In 2022, Jean-Claude voiced a character in Minions, The Rise of Gru, and right now he's working on several new projects, in particular, the Italian action movie Silent Kill and the film Falcon Man. Van Damme was given the nickname Muscles from Brussels. The story of its origin is quite curious. He once confessed to reporters that he adores Muscles from Brussels, and the first word sounded indistinguishable from the word Muscles. For more than 20 years, the celebrity has been a vegetarian. He loves animals very much, especially dogs. Jean-Claude found most of his dozens of pets on the streets and he even flew some of them from Thailand on a rented private plane. During his long career, the actor has starred in commercials many times. He promoted a Mexican chips brand Tostitos, Coors Light Beer, a mobile game from Lilith Game Studios, a Belgian betting and online casino company, an Australian car maintenance and repair company Ultratune, as well as the Russian mobile operator MTS. It was reported that the latter paid the celebrity $2 million. And of course, speaking of advertising with Van Damme, it's impossible to ignore the legendary Volvo video where the actor does the splits, standing with each foot on the side view mirrors of two trucks moving backwards. The video was released in 2013 and immediately gained millions of views, giving rise to a lot of parodies. 
The most epic splits, as Jean-Claude himself called it, was filmed from the first take, but before filming, the stunt was rehearsed for three days. Of course, the actor had a safety harness, but its design was never made public. According to some sources, they hid a special belt under the actor's pants, attached it to the mirrors, behind which they placed platforms, which in turn embraced the entire foot of the actor. He was paid $4 million for this death-defying stunt. Now Jean-Claude Van Damme's net worth is estimated at $40 million. His revenue peaked in the 90s, and the actor invests the earned money in producing his own films. Since 2012, Jean-Claude has lived in a four-story mansion in the Marina del Rey area of Los Angeles. He paid $6 million for the house with six bedrooms and eight bathrooms. The windows offer a beautiful view of the ocean, which can also be enjoyed from the roof terrace. The actor sold this property in 2016 for $7.25 million and moved to another mansion in Los Angeles. Jean-Claude's fleet includes a hybrid McLaren P1 supercar, a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider, but most often he can be seen driving a luxury Bentley Continental GT. In the 2010s, Jean-Claude Van Damme often visited Russia. He met with Putin, the head of the Chechen Republic, Ramzan Kadyrov, and even participated in the celebration of the City Day in Grozny, which angered Human Rights Watch. Despite this, he is not banned from entering Ukraine. For example, many scenes of The Last Mercenary were filmed in Kiev. After the start of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Van Damme made almost no statements, only posting on social media, I wish peace to the entire world. However, in December, he posted a video in which he was surrounded by the Ukrainian military and said, Slava Ukraini, which means glory to Ukraine. One, two, three. Slava Ukraine! Slava! Yeah! Photos with the celebrity were also posted by Ukrainian police officers and a doctor from a private hospital, Uzgarad Zakarpatia Oblast. Jean-Claude Van Damme is quite a controversial person. He had ups and downs, he made right and wrong decisions, but it's difficult to deny the scale of his influence. Which movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme do you like the most? I'm okay. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.